Hallelujah. It's the, the third Sunday in January 2022, and we are here together. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that. Uh, welcome to the Circum Church, Circle Church. Lord, help me in Jesus' name. Welcome to the Circle Church of Alexandria. We invite you guys to just give God all you have today because he deserves everything. All we can give him is our worship, our praise, and our service, and we're going to do our best giving it all to him today. So we invite you to out here in the building and out there in live stream land to just get up and let his blood flow through you today to worship and praise him and give him all you got. Y'all ready to give it to him? I am. All right, well, let's go. Let's go. Jesus. <laughs> Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, we serve a strong God, we do. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, you are God. Yes, you are God. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 It's no praise that's high. 
God, mighty God, we serve. The mighty God, we what a mighty God we serve. We serve, yeah. Mighty God, we serve. Heaven and earth adore the mighty God we serve. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo, we serve a wonderful, wonderful God. We get to serve him. We get to serve the king of glory. Woo, the mighty master. <laughs> There's no one above him. Woo, There's no one greater than our God. And we're thankful, God, that you chose us to love us. We want nothing more than to be your presence every moment we get. We want to be in your presence, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. And every man will bow
presence, oh God, we welcome your Holy Spirit today, and we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you come in, you sit with us, you help us, you lead and guide us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you help us to have the mind of Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that we are recipients, Lord God, of everything that you're doing. Lord God, we put our full hope, trust in you today, Lord God. We ask that you speak through the man of God today, Lord God, as he comes to bring your holy word. Help him to bring it with truth and clarity, Lord God. We ask that you cover his mind, cover his mouth, Lord God. Help him to be the man of God that you've called him to be. We trust and thank you, Lord God, that we'll never be the same after today. In Jesus' name we pray and say, Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Ah, we get to be friends with Jesus. And if that don't make you happy, I don't know what will. He calls us his friend. That means he chose us. He picked us to be his friend. So every
Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord. Help us say, take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord.
that's somebody in here. We don't have to do it on our own. You don't have to fix it before he can. Hey, hey, all you got to do is give it to him. Just give it to him. Hey, hey, hey. he'll prove himself. Hey, 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 give it to him. Because he's proven himself. Give it to him. He'll show you he can. He's more than able. Oh, in prayer, we'll meet you there, God. In prayer, we'll meet you there, God. In prayer, we'll meet you there, God. In prayer, we'll meet you there, we'll meet you there. In knows our every weakness. (laughs) And then, since he knows it, all we got to do is take. Oh, God. To the Lord in prayer. Can we find the I don't know about y'all, but I had a, a conversation um, with the Lord recently. Um, follow our 21 days of prayer and fasting. I don't know how y'all's prayer is looking because some of mine sound like fights. Because I'll be very honest, um, there are sometimes I pick up the phone and I want to tell somebody about how I'm feeling. And then I feel that nudge me is like, are you talking about it or do you pray? Part of me is like, well, the reason I want to talk is because I want to feel. And so, I'm going to be honest, the pastor and God had a fight this week um, because I said, now, now, now Lord, I want to vent to you like I do to my homies. Like, I, I want to vent to you like I do to men's group. I, I, I want to vent to you like I do with my best friends. But I want to be able to do, like, can you not beat me over the head with the answer? Let me get it out. Come on, some of y'all talk to me in here. Can you just let me get it out first? Before, before I, listen, I know you know it. I, I understand it. But can you can you allow me this moment to just get it out and not feel the need to be Jesus by Jesus in this moment? I ain't got no help in here. And um, let me tell you something. Whatever way you can get in front of the throne room of God, however it is you can get there, do it. Who can, because honestly, most of my venting, hear me, we don't ever vent about wins. It's usually the frustrations and the sorrows. Can we find a friend so faithful sorrow share. He already knows. So we might as well take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, golly. Might as well. Might as well.
pray like that for a moment. God, there are folks in here in this place that need some answers. They need some clarity. God, they didn't come here this morning for a motivational talk. They came to hear from the bread of life. So would you make that plain to them right now? There's a hurt on every chair. There's confusion. There's distance. And God, wherever we are, whether we've been found faithful or faithless, still speak to us. Whether we've got it right this week or we got it all wrong this week, speak to us. Whether we didn't follow the plan or we created one of our own, God still speak to us. And we'll be so careful to give you all the glory and praise that you're due. We won't always have the best words or the most articulate ones. Sometimes it's just our groan. So, Father, would you interpret the groans and the cries and the sighs and the eye rolls and the pounding of our fists? God, would you interpret all of what that means as an offering to you and a cry for help for our Heavenly Father? Hear that from us. And then, oh God, would you speak? So would you hide me behind your cross, all be seen, none of me. Let the words of my mouth and meditation in my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God, we love you. We trust you, even when it's hard to say. And we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus and the people of God said, Amen. Let's clap those hands for the Lord one more time this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, just for me, can you shout unto God with a voice of triumph? Come on. Woo, hallelujah in here. Amen. Amen. You can have your seats. Uh, am I just okay? Yes. All right. Family, you know where to go and, and what to do and how to go. I just follow instructions. Amen. It's good? All right. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Um, all right, y'all, um, if you've got your Bibles, um, I want to tell you where the text is. You can go ahead and get there, but it's going to take me a minute to get there. But I'll be in Matthew chapter 28, starting at verse 19. But I'm also going to reference um, the book of Acts as well. Um, every, every year um, around this time in January, uh, what we do is we uh, have a conversation we call the State of the Church. Um, say the church, we kind of talk about things that are going on here, uh, things that are going on on a national level, um, and there's some things going on on a global level as well. But uh, I, I can't speak for all of what uh, was going on around the world. I can speak for what's going on right here at the Circle Church. I can speak for what I see uh, in, in our city, in our state, and some of our nation. And uh, we always take some time to address that and look at that, and uh, I think this is going to be um, uh, an important word important word for us. So let me start by saying this. Um, I know you can't tell by uh, what this little whatever I got on, but I'm a classic man. Um, I'm, I, I try to call myself a classic man. Most of this is because it's cold. Amen. Uh, I ain't put these boots out in a minute because it's cold. Uh, but I'm a classic man. And uh, my dad, who has uh, worked in um, the professional world pretty much all his life, um, taught me very early. He says, son, um, a, a black suit and a white shirt and a black tie never go out of style. Um, now, the cuts may change. What I mean by that, some of y'all like used to be the big old wide lapels, came all the way out to here. Um, if y'all grew up in, y'all grew up in the old, okay, let me say old church. Let me see. That early 2000s uh, suits, with a uh, with a tail went down here past the come on help me here went down past the knee um, when we was wearing um, the Starbucks Starburst color gaiters when we went to church. All right, mostly ethnic. Let me get everybody. Um, there used to be a time when all we wore 
um, was now listen I, again. I'm multi ethnic now. You see my little my little Wrangler vest on, y'all feel me? Um, but it used to be uh, listen. Um, I, I would go to church at North Road, North Fork Peak. If you're watching, I love you. But it felt like the um, the uh, how I say that the uniform for church. Uh, it had to be a Columbia shirt or a Magellan shirt. Y'all know the Magellan. That's the off brand that you can get at Academy. It's, it's always better anyway. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and then you had the Drake vest and the Georgia boots. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all see? I'm telling you, I just I, I grew up like some of y'all grew up. You know what I'm saying? Like it's so. I, I, I found out in, in a way, um, but so the classics still work. The classics still work. Um, and so then again, I learned some other things. Like, okay, what else I need, Dad? He's like, uh, you still can't go wrong with a white t-shirt. Uh, can't go wrong with a white shirt. Can't go wrong with a navy blazer and some uh, and some khaki slacks. Can't go wrong with that. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I, I, I kind of find myself to be somewhat of a classic man, and. Um, why why are the classics um, important? Because I think classics are good because you need something that's timeless in every generation. Um, there's just, okay, um, I, I'm, I'm in a cool job, I'm having a problem, it's Air Force Ones again, you know what I'm saying? Now, the way that some of y'all behind that camera, because ain't none of us in here, we be right, some of y'all be wearing these Air Force Ones, you know what I'm talking about, Kais, is disturbing. All right, clean them. Good God Almighty in here. All right, I ain't got time for that sermon, but Lord Jesus, clean them shoes. Hallelujah. All right. Um, but I'm a classic man, and I think I've really realized it because of this. And a lot of you are as well. It's like you can add some pizzazz, this all, whatever, but classics are you, sometimes you need those timeless pieces in the wardrobe, okay? Um, the timeless pieces. I can do it and wear it for the occasion and anywhere. And I, here's what I'm here's what I'm, I'm learning. I, I think that we don't. Okay, let me say it this way: trends will, are going to come and go. All right, but classics usually stay. Okay, and if we're not careful, I mean, ever because you want to say, "Oh, this is an iteration." It's happening every single generation. Every single generation is looking. You ready? Is usually looking for something that will pull them in that's trendy and attractive. It's trendy and it's attractive and it has a pull. And a, like, listen, ain't nothing wrong with trends. Like, rock your stuff. Do what you do. I love it. Same. Here. I get it. However, but let's do that with fashion and not with the church. Let, let, let's, let's do that with how you pick shoes, not with the church. Let's, let's, let's do that in any other place, but, but not with the church, because I, there ain't nothing brand new that's going to be um, arising from this text that somebody who loves the Lord has not articulated in some way, shape, form, or fashion already. Uh, okay, hear me. Uh, people say, I I've never heard it this way before. Can I tell you something? Um, somebody's already said it the way it just hasn't gotten to you. And when you heard somebody talk about this the last time, you were in a different place, life and space to be able to hear it. OK, so somebody may have told you this before. Oh, this level of so and so and so and so like, but you weren't in the same headspace then. And so here what I'm saying, if we're not careful, we'll pick where we enter into the local church and the word of God based off of the current space that we are in, thinking that we need something trendy to pull us into something that's classic and don't need no sprucing up. So be careful at making assumptions and opinions about the, oh Lord help me, about the word of God and about the church and about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ based off the place that you are in for the moment. Y'all, I, I just, time is becoming, it's, it's cyclical. Um, I'm trying not to use all my Marvel illustrations every single week, but y'all, I just love it. Um, it it's what, I, what I'm understanding, y'all, is that we, we've seen this in some way, shape, let me say this way, we have never seen this day before and we'll never see it again. However, cyclically, there's some 
there are some things about this day that are similar to days before in days of past. Me meaning, as long as people are people, okay, um, we can predict, help me God, um, some things in some way that things are going to be. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to communicate to you is this. Um, as long as God is God, as long as people are people, the day that we're going to get, we're never going to be able to see again. But it is a day similar to one that we've seen before. And the same God who was, this is what I like about God, he is, he's there, he's now, he is um, going, in, going into the future, and he is currently covering all aspects of time that we're in right now. And God was then, he's now, and he's later. So if that God is unchanging, hear, hear me, hear me, the day might be new to you, it ain't new to him. And the same way he sustained it then, now and later, he will still do it. So if that's the case, there's still something that's relatively, whew, there's something new and old to each day. I'll say it again. There's something new and old to each day. There, there's something, ready? There's something classic about every day that we've been given. All right? So what does that do with the hill of beans to save the church? I, I think, I think that we've got to rediscover some of the classics. Now, here's the thing about the classic. Now, before I get to that part of the text, um, if you've got your Bibles, go to Acts chapter 2 real quick. Um, I want to show you, this has been a hallmark passage for our church. Um, I believe it should be a hallmark passage for the church as a whole. Um, here's what it says, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Uh, the 47, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and the prayers, and all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together, had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings, and distributing distributing um, the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord adds their number day by day, those who were being saved. I want to show you a few things that are right here in this passage that we've been talking about for the church for forever. There's five things that are important uh, to the life of each church. Number one, there's discipleship. Number two, there's fellowship. Number three, there's a worship. Four, there's ministry. And five, there's evangelism. All of this is happening right here in this passage. If you want to find, find out what is a circle church developing their model of ministry on, those five things right there, what we talk about, discipleship, fellowship, worship, ministry, evangelism. I could break down all what those things mean to you, but here's what I need you to know. If, okay, what's our purpose here? What, what's our focus on? L listen, our, our ministry statement, our mission statement, all that good stuff is going to bleed from this. When we make decisions like, how are we going to do this? How what are we going to spend on this? What are we going to do from this? It comes from these purposes. All right. Um, why, why, why are we trying to meet back together from these purposes? What are we trying to do in kids ministry comes from these purposes. What are we trying to do in group comes from these purposes. OK, that are all hear me. That did not come from a strategy. It came from the text. All right. Um, hear me. I'm all about finding new ways to implement strategy for you and your church and for where you're going for. 2022 and beyond, you can have a rhyming thing for it. That's cool. That's great. I don't care. However, I'm just saying, if you don't have a strategy that it's about, hmm, that it's about who, Lord, that's about the Lord that comes from the Lord, I don't know if it's going to work. That I don't know. I know it ain't going to work. So, so hear me good. Don't, hmm, oh, Lord, help me, God. Don't confuse uh, a long line with sustainability. And can I, let me say it that way. Don't confuse a long line with sustainability. Now, this is Alexandria. Anytime, Lord Jesus, something new comes to the city, there's a long line. All right. Um, here's what I learned about long lines in new places. Um, um, uh, people are trying to figure it out. Okay, so like, 
hear me good. Um, I'm trying to trying to help some of us in here. All right. You may have been to a wing stop before, but you ain't been to the one here. All right. So it may have, Lord help me. That lemon pepper wing might taste different than the last one you went to. But baby, the worker in there, this, this, you know, hey, there might not be an ounce of pepper on them wings. You hear me? Um, now why am I <laughs> Lord help me, God? Now why am I telling you that? Hear me? Because sometimes there are folks who can attract, and there are businesses that can attract long lines, but still haven't figured out what it is that they are yet and what they do, how they do it. Now, let me tell you the difference between a long line. Now, Cain's got a long line, so much so that they had to build a whole new parking lot, Lord Jesus. All right? But can I tell you something I like about Cain's? They figured out the simplicity, preach boy, of what they sell. Listen, um, what you going to get in Cain's? Chicken. Fries. Bread. That's it. They figured out what it is. It's so much so that simplicity, watch it, has added to the quality and the experience. Y'all missing it. Look, classics, classics, hmm, classics, God have mercy in here, may not have a consistent quote unquote long line, but it's got consistent business. Classics stay open. I'm trying my best. Classics stay open. Classics stay open. Now, why? Because they figured out what it, this is what we do. So Acts 2, 42 to 47, like, Pastor, we talk about this past all the time. Yeah, it's a classic. It helps us stay open. It helps us keep the main thing the main thing. That's what we're trying to do. I'm listening to what, I'm, Pastor, why come we ain't done it doing so? And that we, listen, there could be different variations and versions of things, all right? Like, hey, look, I didn't realize, y'all, I ain't know this. Y'all know Cain's got honey mustard. You didn't know, did you? I'm trying to tell you. Now, look, now, hey, hey, I'm trying to help some of y'all this morning. You're welcome, all right? However, I didn't even know I needed to look for that, okay? I, I, didn't, I didn't know it was there. You can, there's a new way for me to dip my classic sauce. How about that? I done learned that. New way, me, new way for me to dip. But ain't nothing changed on the menu. The main thing is still the main thing. You, you ready? The sauce was made with the chicken in mind. Here we good. The sauce was made with the chicken in mind. So quit majoring on the minors. You hear me good? Listen, um, we don't come there for... Let, now, now, now let, let me say that. Let me take that away. Some of y'all, some of y'all, the only reason you go to Cane's, like, can I get eight extra sauces, please? Like, you only got four tenders. What are the sauces for? Some of y'all came there to put that sauce on something else at your house. I know y'all. I know y'all, all right? Now, now look, why am I telling you all this? Look, the classics are there for a reason, okay? This centers us. We need centering. We need to be able to come back to something that gravitates our hearts and our minds on the main thing. But here's what I know. While in the church right now, this is weird. It's weird because um, we're trying to figure out, y'all, this is, we've been doing two years, two years of this pandemic. It wasn't supposed to last this long. And this has drastically changed how do we do, do life, not just as a church community, but as a community as a whole. And while we're trying to figure it out, it can be difficult. So we got to figure out how do we continue with this? How do we call the church back together while we are here and separate, and then what will look new once we've done all of that? Because here's what I'm saying. We've, we've done so much of what are we going to do when this passes? We, we, we were saying that when we got here in March, uh, and, and we were saying uh, it, it might be a few months we get back to normal. Uh, two years later. All right? So it, it, this may not be when it passes. This, this is it. So we got to figure it out. And while we're figuring out, I think it's important for us to realize um, God is still on the throne. God's still going to take care of us. So, so what, do I, what, do I, what do we see in the church right now? Oh, let's talk about natural love for a second. I, 
I, I think, Lord help me, I think lines are blurred in allegiance. We've said this before. Um, you you got to, Lord help me, you got to be careful um, trying, Lord have mercy, to, hmm, you need to stand and love and walk with people as best as you can but learn how to do it without partnering with their dysfunction. Because some of us, Lord help, while you struggling with something and that I'm struggling with something, that venting that I was talking to you about, we end up finding friends sometimes based off of what we're venting about currently. And what we're venting about currently may not be, Lord help, long term. So, it's a, so, so I, I found a friend Venting about this current struggle that I have that I'm not going to have always. Will I still be connected with this person after I no longer have this struggle? And am I trying to keep up with a relationship that has ooh, um, outgrown its expiration date? And since I'm doing that, I'll be tempted to think that I'm supposed to keep up with you and keep being with you. But what brought you together was dysfunction. And now that you are trying to move forward, there are some people who were trying to like, well, hey, listen, can, can, let me say this way. There were some of us, Lord, help me God up in here. We were mm, I, figuratively and literally, we were, I was marching with people last year that I'm not marching with this year. God help me in here. There, there, there's some folk that you can align with something and be in agreement about one thing here. And disagreement about another. This, this is happening denominationally in the church. There, there, there are some things like, I'm in agreement with you here. But right here, and, and that's good because, hear, hear me on this, it's important for us to know where we are and where we are cemented theologically and ecclesiologically. In, in, in the study of God and the study of the church, it's important for us to know who we are. I think we can communicate, work with, and share, and partner with others, but not at the expense of the main thing. H hear me good. If you keep partnering with people about sauce, people will forget about the chicken. Like, so I'm partnering with the ministry because we have the same sauce in mind, but we don't have the same theology in mind. Then I catch you there. We're partnering like, oh, man, we, we do very similar things in the city. And he just went, oh, that's, that's great. But we don't have the same thing going on theologically because you ready? Because my motivation and your motivation are different. My my motivation. Hear me. My motivation is to make much of Jesus, not to not make much of me. Say that again. There are some people who can do the right thing for the wrong reasons. And I think what's happening in the church at times and happening, we're allowing and partnering with people who are in the culture, who've got some good things they want to do. And we can work with the church and the church can work with them. However, our motivations are different. Am I making sense here? So we can partner with folk who got some good things going on. That's great. But at the end of the day, watch this. Your motivations will tell you why you in it. And here it is, how long you in it. God have mercy in here because my motivation keeps me in something even after I want to get out. Because some things are seasonal. Lord have mercy. I, some, some, some folk who was texting me about marching um, for, for folks last year have stopped texting. Hmm. Help me, God. Um, why? Because it was cute then. Then it gets harder. Oh, Lord, um, the, mm, I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, being a part of the church is hard. Being a part, no, being a believer is hard. Amen, somebody. It's hard. The sunshine and roses, who told you this? Who told you this? No, it's hard. It's hard because, um, here's the operative word, because it's about being a disciple. That's we are in the main text. You're like, Pastor, we get to the text. I'm getting there. Hang on a second. It's about being a disciple. That's what national level, closer to home. Here's why I know. Here's why I see all the time. Y'all, people are tired. Y'all see this? Y'all feeling this? People are tired. How do I know that? Because jobs that, we're we'll talking about the working, um, jobs that used to have the you, you do the exact same thing, the exact same way for years upon years. 
Nothing has changed. And then the Panda Express happens, okay? And that's completely, talk about a pandemic. And then that's completely changed the way we do work and how we do work, right? And when it's changed how we do work and why we do work and the purpose shifts, um, this means, in short, the finish line has moved for some of us in what we do and how we work. That means it changes our schedule. That means it changes our patterns. That means it changes our accomplishment rate. So what they were used to be asking for us, they're no longer asking for us anymore, asking for more. It's a longer workload. It's more hours. It's more instruction. It's more product being pushed out. OK, and that leads to people being tired okay okay people being tired what else has to change um people getting together people get having time with family not as easy as it used to be um folks literally are quarantining during christmas you know what i'm saying quarantining like all right well y'all over there and have hey man christmas you know you over there in the room by yourself getting slid of uh, a plate to get you a snack on something you know what i mean like it's changed the way we've done things like Watch this. Um, and some of us, we're recentered, me too, around the matriarchs and patriarchs of our family. Some of us are not getting a chance to get with them anymore because we want to protect them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's changed the way. Listen, come on now. Even if y'all all get together, it still feel different, don't it? It's changed the way that we've interacted with people. Here, and you need that. You need that recentering. And it's changed the way that we've done it. And so it's, it's difficult, all right? So what about this? What about vacation? Lord, help me. Um, it's changed the way we've done that. Some of y'all would have been on the beach, been on the beach somewhere. Now I'm worried about too many of y'all out here that ain't. Amen. Um, some of y'all would have been on the cruise already. Too many of y'all. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's, it's changed the way we've done things. And so some of the things that have added the, hear me, the, the regular routine of our life have been disrupted. And it comes out really simply with this. You get tired, okay? So what does that do to you once you get home? I'm trying to talk practically, okay? Um, you ready? You are holding on to dear life. Those hours that you get where there's some rest, some relaxation, and some reprieve. Am, am I telling the truth? You holding on to dear life when you try to get some of that family time back. Like, I, I, ain't, I ain't got nothing left. Some of y'all already know that. I, I've got nothing. I got nothing left. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and then here it is. And while doing it, people are still asking for more. You know? So it's like you were holding on very tightly for this. And hear me, you should fight for it. But can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? The enemy loves to live in a gray area. Why? Because what the enemy is trying to do is these are things that we need. We need rest. We need family time. We need this. But it's driving us away from a deeper connection in the family of God and with God himself. I had a counselor uh, at school tell me, Kim, I know you probably know this, about uh, while I was my time at ULM, I had roommates and others who were leaving stuff away from school. And, you know, myself thought about it one time. And um, she said, the, the longer you are away, the harder it is to go back. Don't y'all tell them that? The longer you are away, the harder it is to go back. What is happening in a very realistic sense, because here's the truth, people are tired, okay? People are burnt out. you got so much stuff going on. The last thing you want, I don't want to go to another event. Y'all not, li listen, you don't want to say that because we said these things before. Let's just talk straight. I don't want to go to another event. Like, I barely got enough time to work. You trying to get me to go serve in the kids? You want me to be a greeter? Talk straight. Come on, look at me. It, it, it's tight, but it's right. You, 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 want, you want me to pull up for church? Like, listen, I don't have enough time to do laundry anymore. Like, I, I, ain't, I ain't got enough. To, listen, I'm trying to get my whole week together on Sunday. Shoot, Sunday I was just trying to, or Saturday I was just trying to rest. Sunday I've got anxiety because I'm thinking about how Monday coming. Come on, help me here. So you're getting all of this together. You finally like, I like I ain't got time to do this. And so here's what it's doing. The enemy is using something that you need to also drive you away from something that you need. You need rest. You need relaxation. You need time with family. 
but you need to be connected to the Lord and to the people of God. Because the longer, oh, I'm so tired, I'm so this, I'm so that, that also eats away at your time with the Lord. It all, well, well I'm, I'm spending time with the Lord, Pastor. I just ain't got time for church. I just got time for it. Hey, look, can I tell you something? Listen. However you are involved right now, however you get some word, I encourage you. I'm so glad for technology right now. I'm so glad that we've out allowed ourselves to make room and make space in a place like this. But can I tell you something? We've had to figure it out everywhere else. We've had to figure it out everywhere else. We had to figure it out at work. We had to figure it out at the grocery store. We had to figure it out at athletics. We had to figure it out. Uh, at outings with people, we had to figure it out. But for some reason, when it comes to the church, I'm picking now, it's past talk. Um, it, it's a struggle. Because, hear me, if you, well, hear me, if you think it's optional, then I get it. But, but when you realize the sacrifice that a gift that's been given to you, you won't treat it as such. Like, hear me, because church ain't about us, okay? Church is not about you being these seats in this building. Like, I'm in church. I'm involved in the body of believers. I'm leading in ministry, not because of sacrifice of you, because of him. And since I realize that, y'all, can we shout for a second? Some of y'all need to be shouting on the fact that you saved. Since I'm saved, the sacrifice of being a part of the body of believers ain't because you did. Ain't because of what the programs we offer at the church. It's because of him. So that changes my involvement status. Lord help. That changed the way I look at the church as a whole. And so, yeah, I'm tired. Okay? Figure it out. Look, look, hey, hey, they they paying my bills, all right? He paid for my sins, so I'm gonna figure it out. They pay my bills, okay? Well, uh, I gotta go to work. I gotta go to work. I gotta get paid. Okay, well, the debt that you and I owe is paid for, and it happened on the cross. I gotta figure it out. See what I'm saying? Like it, it's 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 a value system. So if you view that like uh, you know, maybe you understand the. the you don't maybe you don't understand the debt that you owe. Maybe you don't understand how sinful you are. Maybe you don't understand how grateful it is to be alive. And there is a God who loves you enough that he laid down his life for you. When you figure that out, like, man, I got to figure this out. So with that in mind, a couple more things and, and, and I'm done. OK. Um, it's not just so people are hurting. All right, man, y'all pastors are hurting. Now, now listen, I'm not that, I don't know if y'all know this sometimes, like, I'll sometimes get in these moments where I want to talk and I want to holler and all that. Sometimes I get real quiet. Um, and, and, and the reason why, it's like, I, just because I may not be talking don't mean I don't see stuff. Y'all, oh, man, I, sometimes I have a, too much, too much awareness that won't allow me to let people to be a part of my life of working on it. But y'all, um, um, so I get to the point where I'm like, I don't want to share about how bad things are. Pastor, that brings attention. So, so you think I'm going to, I got to stop overthinking sometimes for me, okay? But here's what I've seen. Y'all, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pastors that we know that are not just leaving the ministry, they're leaving this world. Um, like, Two brothers we, we knew recently, suicide. Um, people just, life just, why does that matter? Because we, we need godly leaders. Can, can I, let me tell you something. Everybody in here has, Lord help, has issues that stem from, that could happen from the church, Okay. Can, can I tell you why? Because there are people in the church. People going to be people. People be people. There are also people, pastors, and deacons, and choir members, 
and ushers. All that stuff. See what I'm saying? Now, now why, why am I telling you all this? Because hurt people going to hurt people. So you need godly leaders that can lead who hearing from God. You don't need charisma. Dr. Eric Mason said it this way. He says, you may not have a famous pastor, and that's okay, but all you need is a faithful one. Y'all, hear me good. In an age where there is a clip and there is a post, and come on, I know some of y'all, I ain't trying to get some of that, but hear me. Just be concerned with praying for some of your leaders. Y'all, it's warfare. And But here's what I've also known. God has never had an employee shortage. He'll always find somebody who is faithful and willing to lead. But that doesn't mean that hear me, that people are just replaceable. We should take care and pray, Lord, have mercy. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. So that's, that's kind of what I've been seeing and dealing with. It's, it's a lot of pastors who are just like, I ain't got nobody to talk to. It's lonely. Because every decision that you're trying to communicate and make is being scrutinized. Like, Lord Jesus, like, I'm, I'm thankful for the uh, social media ministry, this, that, or whatever. But it's also giving people the access to communicate stuff they ain't going to be speaking into. C can I tell you something? Um, whoever watched it online, whatever, I'm so glad you're here. But can I tell you something? Um, my responsibility is to pastor the flock of God that the Lord's entrusted me with. That's the circle church. And so the word that may, well, that wasn't for me, Pastor. Well, I, honestly, I was praying that it could reach everybody. But specifically speaking, God got me talking to my folk. Now, that's not popular anymore. Because when I'm praying, when godly leaders are praying, they praying for the folk that they see and they take care of. And we hoping, we hoping that it reaches anybody and everybody, wherever they are. But who I'm responsible for is y'all. Who I'm responsible for are the folk who are watching online back there who were a part of this body that I've been praying for, taking care of all that. I'm responsible for you. So I want to make sure the Lord is speaking to you. Huh? So why am I telling you all this? It's important that you got godly leaders and godly churches that care enough about you that know, mm -mm, now this is the other part, who care enough to check on you. I'm sick and tired of hearing this. Well, they just checking on me because they want me to come serve. They want my money. I care about your life. Like, I'm not texting you to bother you. I got plenty of stuff I could be doing besides texting you. Huh? I care about your life. I'm, sometimes I get so sick of hearing, like, all this abuse church. All they trying to do is get something like, maybe, like, listen, I, I'm working two jobs. All right? I ain't no money hungry. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of us out here just trying to be faithful that have jobs so that we can do ministry. You hear what I'm saying? So I just, I get, I get, I get tired of saying it. Like, all oh, these are like, man, I, I care about you. So some of us are labeling, mm -hmm. some people are labeling things as church abuse, spiritual abuse, where we're just accountability. Church hurt, spiritual abuse, it was just being held accountable. And that's fine if you don't want to be held accountable. But don't call it hurt. Just say, I didn't want to get checked. Cool. Then peace out. And you ain't got to make another, Lord, I'm trying not to be here. Another um, viral post. Listen, I ain't never seen people who spend their time making videos, deconstructing and talking about the church and building a platform for it. These jokers are going so much to, we're going to make a, a deconstructing church conference. Now, help me, Mr. Wall, understand this. They're making a conference that talks about the deconstruction of a church and how they're against the showy things, how they're against all these speakers, how they're against all these things. But there's a sign up. There's a registration. They're paying for speakers. They even got a band. Like, for real. Like, trying to fight, um, you're trying to fight a system 
with the tools it gave you. Have you ever learned this? Even people when they're trying to destroy sometimes the work of the church. Now hear me. I'm not saying there's never an abuse of the church. I ain't saying that. I'm not saying there's never been a church. I'm not saying that. But Lord have mercy. Can we just sometimes, it's just some folks who just love you enough to try to call you into accountability and say, you may not want to go that way. I'm done on this. Look at Matthew 28, verse 19 through 20. If you in church, you know this. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus will observe all that I've commanded you. Hold on with you always to the end of the age. First point, if you're going to make disciples, you have to be one. If you're going to make disciples, you've got to be one. And being a disciple is a call to come and die. And this call to come and die, hmm, everything else, thank you, Pastor Bill, everything else right here in this passage, the participle, okay? But there's only one command, and that's make disciples. Make disciples is the command right here in this passage. Make disciples. Y'all, you ought to care about people, okay? I'm going to get to that. But in order for you to make disciples, you got to be one. You have to know what it is. Ready? The main thing got to be the main thing. You can't tell people to follow something you ain't following. You can't tell people to be excited about something you ain't excited about. You can't tell, bring people to something that you ain't coming to. Huh? It's got to be effective for you in order to be effective for them. So we're going to make disciples. We first got to follow Jesus. If we're going to ask somebody to follow Jesus, we ought to be following Jesus. All right? Which means that we should be deepening our relationship with the Lord. Part of this 21 days of prayer and fasting was to get you closer into the presence of God. Uh, okay, hear, hear me. Why? Because we all need renewal. We all do. We all need to renew our convictions. We, we got to do it. Okay? So, second thing. So that means discipleship then is about people. What's happening with our people? We've got discipleship groups that are growing. Um, What's that? Jan uh, uh, what is this? January 30th. We're meeting every other Sunday. Uh, the ladies are getting together. The Pursuit of Holiness by Jerry Bridges. That's what's going on in the women's ministry. All right. That's, discipleship is happening right now. There is curriculum going on with our kids right now in the back. OK, um, work. Listen, um, that, that ain't daycare. They're learning about Jesus. Lord, help. They're listen. And if we can get it now. Y'all not seeing what I'm, Lord, if, if, if it becomes, if church is optional for these kids now, then don't be surprised when it's a never for them later. So it's important what they're doing. That's happening right here. Right here. They're learning about this right here. We got new leaders serving in different areas every week. Um, I um, talked to Cujo this week. He was talking about. Uh, there was a, a, a member or, or a visitor of this church he ran into and asked about, like, man, you know, how things going on at the church? And uh, do I know anybody who's there? And uh, Cujo told him, man, no. Nah. There probably ain't nobody there from the time that you, that you have exited. That's a good thing. Now, let me tell you why. That means new folks are in, new leaders are serving. Amen? Listen, first of all, every exit ain't got to be messy. All right. Second thing, new people stepping up to the plate is something that should be celebrated. It gives folks an opportunity to build and develop a gifting that God has given them. That's a good thing. So we should be celebrating when that's happening. Amen. That's good stuff happening right here in our midst. OK, we got members who are advancing in their life. Y'all, it's not just you growing here. God has blessed folks who've been a part of this body for them to go be a blessing somewhere else. I was talking to Corey Howard, we prayed for a few days ago, uh, who, who texted me yesterday. He said, Pastor, uh, I got to find myself a church. Um, I'm, I'm already looking. You know, if you know anybody who's around here is going to this. Now, now look, now, you can go anything, been there six days. All right, where can I find the church? Hello? Listen, um, because it, it, it ain't, listen, 
Corey gifted. A lot of y'all gifted. But that ain't what opened the door. Huh? This is the other part. I'm, I'm on a rant this morning. Y'all got to pray for me. Um, the, the danger of being gifted and being a believer is thinking that your giftedness is what opened the door for you. There are other people who are just as gifted as you are. But God, Lord have mercy. Now pick it up. Let me keep moving. All right. Um, there's, all, there's members leading in other various ministries. Okay. There are ministries that are happening on outside of the work of a circle church. Okay. Pastor Lowe talks about all the time. Work happens prison ministry. I want to highlight for um, uh, Sister Maddie uh, Starnes, who has just um, stepped away, has moving, moved away, trying to figure out what life is looking like for her, all right? Was just leading the uh, FCA group last week, leading people to Christ. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. It's come out of our house. Huh? Amen, okay? Um, prayer ministry is going on. Y'all, li listen. Um, there are folks praying for you, and you don't even know about Hear me, it ain't even me. But listen, there are some folks who've been praying for you who are members of this church. This is the part I like, and who ain't members of this church. I asked God, I said, God, would you would, would you have people who partner with the circle church? As that's the church plan. People who would pray, give, and go. That they would pray for the work of ministry, they would give to the work of ministry, and they would go if they were being called here. There are folks who are outside of these doors who don't even know your name, but they know your heart because they can pray for you. What's happening in this ministry? I'm not telling you some outside. I'm telling you what I know about what's going on right here. Discipleship is still about people. All right. Um, let me say back to the text. Last thing, though, is that if, if you're going to be a disciple, you got to be uh, make disciples. You got to be one. Um, discipleship is always going to be about people. But discipleship always has help. Look at this. You already see it. You already know it. Teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. God is not going to position you to do something without him being there. Here's what I ultimately know. The church is classic, Katie. It ain't going nowhere. No matter what state it's in, no matter how many times he gets talking about, no matter how many times he gets abused, no matter how many times people say this, have this, it ain't going nowhere. Because it's not us who's holding it. Why? And I'm with you always. Big God. OK, big God does not take away responsibility from you, because even though God is with us always, he still called us to make disciples. Because it could have been said right here, it could have said it right here. I will make disciples. I will baptize in the name of the Father and all. I mm -mm. could have said all that. No, he said you, 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 you. But he's not leaving us. God chose to partner with you so that we could see the advancement of the kingdom. It's a privilege to even be called to be partners. God ain't got to use none of us, but he chooses to. How are we going to do this? How are we going to see the advancement of the kingdom? How, how are we going to make disciples, Pastor Vince? I'll tell you one thing. We got to get creative. We got to find new ways to do it because the way we've been doing it may not be the same way. All right. But we'll be classic because um, God's still on the throne. Uh, the gospel's still effective no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. Fine with me. Fine with me. Some of y'all going to be, I, I have no idea. I could, I could. List off the names of how we're going to. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. If it's about, if God called you to it, you ready? It involves more than just you. Mm. Your quiet time is about more than just you. Your gifting is about more than just you. That, that, that means God has given you, birthed something in you that has something else in mind. 
So that means making disciples is about people. If you're a disciple, great. Now make more. It's our job to teach disciples how to make disciples that make disciples that make disciples that make disciples. And I keep repeating that all the way down the blackboard. That's it. So that if you ain't thinking about people. Oh, Lord. If you're not thinking about the Lord and the Lord is not prompting on your heart about people who need to come to faith in Christ or come to be a disciple of Christ, then you have not kept the main thing the main thing. Well, pastor, I like church. I like singing. I like preaching. Like, do you like seeing people come to faith in Christ? Do you like seeing people grow in deeper relationship with Christ? Do you like the lights coming on and people getting it? If that answer is no, you like sauce and not chicken. And that runs out. The main thing will stay the main thing. That, that, that's okay. We, we're consistent and expecting, right? We're consistent and expecting. We're going to be consistent to do the things that God's called us to do. And here's why I'm expecting. Lo, I'm with you all. To the end of the age. If he gonna be with us, shoot, open the floodgates, man. I ain't worried about the church, y'all. It's classic. I ain't worried. Not. But I want us to grab hold of what it is that we've been called what that means for the circle church, what that means for y'all who are watching online, what that means for those of us who know that God's birthed a passion in us to do something. It ain't going to be on the heels or not at the expense of some, of some suffering and calling and grief on your part. If God called you to it, he's going to let you see the winds, but you also going to have to go through it. How blessed it would be to share in the sufferings of the Lord. Because that also means I get to share the glories of the Lord as well. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Father, we are not going to be deterred. We're not going to be in pain. We are not going to struggle with what you called us to do. Not because it's not difficult. Not because it won't have its moments. But ultimately, because we know you're never going to leave us. Father, would you speak to every heart that's in here right now? Every heart that's watching going on. God, this is a day that they need to be a part of a church. This is a broken one. It's one full of people who are going to be people. But one will run fast to repentance. If that's you in here this morning, or that's you who's watching online, here's what I want you to do. If you're watching online, I just want you to message the page so we can get some information to you about how the Circle Church family can be a part of your family. If that's you in here this morning, what I want you to do at the close of this message, as we dismiss, there'll be someone over here, right here in this connection area, to talk with you. Sister Daisy's going to be over here to give you a, a, a little gift bag and just to speak to you. But also, if you want this church to be a part of your family, then today's a good day for that to happen. God, you are still using this busted up vehicle called the church. It's busted up because of what we do with it. But it's glorious and perfect in your hands. So we place it with you. We trust it with you. And Father, for that person who is yet to respond to your good news, to realize that they are actually in sin, they're in need of a Savior, 
and they should turn from that life of sin, confess that sin, and yield their life over to you. God, even right now, would you speak to them? And God, we're going to be so careful to give you the glory, honor, and praise that you're due. Lord, we trust you. Who are we? Lord, we trust you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, listen, let me give you just a few announcements and then I'm going to um, to be out of your way. Uh, I, I think that um, there are a couple things we need to share. Number one, uh, if you are still following along with our 21 days of prayer and fasting, um, all those posts will be made available. I told you last week that Pastor was struggling with that whole social media thing. Uh, and, and Pastor Lowe said, Pastor, we're going to make a video. I'm like, hey, man, I need to stay away. Let me tell you something. God's working on my heart with some of that that I see. Um, can I tell y'all something? It, it, it ain't as bad as we think it is. Y'all, people are still good people. And what I, I caught myself doing was disliking folk. Help me in here. Um, I was like, I don't want, ugh. I don't need to be seeing what you post. Amen? Y'all, it's helped me love some of these jokers better. You feel me? It's helped me love some of these people. It's helped me check myself. So y'all, look, you can't, you can't lead people you don't love. You can't affect change people that you, that you don't love. And if there's something getting in the way of you loving them, move it. If that scrolling been wearing, Lord, have mercy. I'm just testifying. So, um, y'all, there's just some things that I think have been worse of revealing to us during this time. All right? So I encourage you to keep keep connecting with that. Um, if you are able to give, uh, I want you to be able to do so. Um, speaking of giving, I want to let you know about where we are in church finances. We're going to get to some of that. Our business meeting has been pushed back, y'all. Hear me. I've been trying to limit some of this. Y'all, it, it's, it's been... It's flying through everywhere. It flew through our house. It's flying through your house. And so um, I, I know we got to, listen, we got to figure out how to meet. All right? So some of this going to have to be in Zoom. Some of it's going to be a few of us in person. Um, even we in here, I try to say whatever we got to go. Because y'all, like, uh, you need to know what's going on. Because God, look, look here. Number one, we had not closed our doors. Number two, God is still taking care of us. Number three, I, I, let me shout on this real quick. Y'all, we're doing, Lord help, better financially right now with Lord of mercy. Less people and before the pandemic. Hear me, not just operating, saved money in the bank. God has been good to us and we are going to use and make sure that what we have been given we use it for the advancement of the kingdom keeping the main thing the main thing so you either know about that so you can see what's going on and how you play a part in it whoo i'm so excited for y'all to hear about that so again that was supposed to be this wednesday but that got pushed back and so i want you to stay posted on our uh, our website and on facebook uh, when you're supposed to be on it, uh, so you can hear more information about that. So we got some meetings coming up, and then we're going to get all the information to you. Um, also, uh, giving statements will be made available soon as well. I know we're working working on getting some of those things to you, so that's going to be made available for you soon when you get on top of your tax business, and so uh, for that as well. I know I'm probably missing something, um, but my honchos uh, are here, uh, are gone, so... If I'm missing something, uh, charge it to my head and blame it on Cujo. Uh, I plan, I plan, I plan. Uh, that was for real. Um, God's been good to us. He's going to continue to keep us. Um, this is important. 
keep meeting. Let's keep making it the main thing, the main thing. Amen. And let's keep checking on our folk. Y'all, Lord, I'm done. We got to check on our people. You don't know how much that text message means. You don't know how much. Now, don't pull up now. We, we got to have some. Don't just. I, I say that. And I be doing that to the people I love. Because you, you know I will pull up on y'all. I'm so sorry. I will pull up. I, you know I'll do it. Let's check on our people, all right? Let's make sure we're checking on our people, all right? Because this, you know, this is a lonely time. You need to know that, they, that, that you love them and that God loves them. Amen? I just said too much. Let me pray. We'll be dismissed. God, we love you. Thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. God, would you hold us together? Would you keep us together? Would you wrap us in your arms of love? We'll be so careful to give y'all praise for our honor you. Now may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of us henceforth now and forever. The people of God said, amen. All right. Go in peace. Have a great, great day.